Lisa Marie Benz, and thank you for joining me for another edition of Alive and Kicking on Location. It is my honor to be here next to Mr. Ron Rice, the king of Hawaiian Tropic, or I should say the former king of Hawaiian Tropic. King of this house. Yes, king of this house. <laughs> and we're sitting on his beautiful thrones here that are absolutely gorgeous. But uh, it's been about five years since I interviewed Ron, and a lot has happened. So we're going to go back a little bit to his roots, talk about, a little bit about Hawaiian Tropic and all that he's doing now. So, Juan, let's talk a little bit about um, Hawaiian Tropic, how it all began, all that neat stuff about, I know that you were um, on a trip to Hawaii, well, and... Well, it goes, it goes further back to make a long story short. I was a poor country boy from the mountains of North Carolina. I was the true, original John boy from the Waltons, and that was, that was really me, because the way they lived and their family, what their family did was exactly the same as what my family did. And, uh, but anyhow, I, I grew up poor boy in the mountains. I decided to move to Daytona Beach after uh, graduating from the uh, University of Tennessee. I, that was the closest major college because we had very little money. And I, I managed to get out of there in, uh, in uh, natural science and physical science. So I came to Daytona Beach and I started working as a lifeguard on the beach in the summer times and a, and a chemistry and physics teacher in the winter times. Did that for nine years. And during that nine years' time, starting about the second year in teaching, I, I, I dreamed up Hawaiian Tropic. Well, actually, it was called Tropic Pan back then. I dreamed it up and uh, um, mixed it up in a garbage can, which uh, I think you got a picture of yes, this a little earlier. Yes. And uh, we had no money. We had no way to. I bought, I bought caps, labels, bottles, oils, all these different things with the small amount of money I had. And we, we'd make one bottle and sell it. And, and get enough money to buy two, and then from two to four, and four to eight, and it just went up like a like a snowball rolling down the mountain, you know. And that's that's how it all started. Really? Okay. Now, didn't you go to Hawaii at one point, and you saw some <coughs> girls using something yeah, special? Yeah, actually, actually there, there, it was a it was a uh, a trip that somebody had bought, and uh, they couldn't go, and it was offered to me just not the last minute kind of situation. I've never been there, never never been anywhere really. And uh, I uh, went over and I went to the back side of the islands, especially Oahu. And I saw, back, back then it was really, really tense because we were Howleys. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're uh, not nice to Howleys. <laughs> but back, I'm talking in the, in the, in the mid-60s, you know. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a real quick trip. But I was able to go to the back side of the islands and go and see what was going on. And these women were chopping open baby coconuts and they were pulling the gel copra out of those coconuts, rubbing it in their hair all over the body, and that, that's kind of where I, where I dreamed up the idea from this, you know. So did you, are you using like part of the coconut? Oh Is yeah, that yeah, oh yeah, yeah. We use, the that's product. the gel copra, it's called gel copra. Oh, okay. And that we use that in, in, in most all the products to a certain degree and, and forever. And you, with your chemistry background, you were able to kind of mix up this? Very limited chemistry background. Oh, okay. well, I, I had enough chemistry <laughs> to make me dangerous. <laughs> Make me think I could do something. <laughs> wow, okay. And then the name Hawaiian Tropic, is that why you tied in that name? Is well, that actually, I, I started out with it. My name originally was Tropic Tan. Mm -hmm. And I had the, I had the um, problem with, uh, well, I was sitting on my tower out here on the beach, and this, uh, this gay attorney from uh, Washington, D.C. came along, and he was spending a lot of time hanging around my tower, and I had no idea why. I was very naive, <laughs> and uh, he was. He said, "Well, what about the? What, what, I showed him my new product, and he said, oh, that's lovely.' And I said, "What about your trademarks and trade uh, names?" I said, "What are you talking about?" And he's, he said, "Oh, you don't. You haven't trademarked your product." And I, I don't even know what you're talking about. So he went back to Washington. He said he'd call me. And a day later, he called me, and he said, "Not only do you not own this name, Tropic Tan, but..." Some guy in Passaic, Passaic, New Jersey owns it, and he registered it back in 1951. And I went, oh my God, now I've, I've got this product that's taken off, it's starting to do really good, uh -huh. but it's just locally around the Daytona area, and maybe a little bit north, a little bit south. And I'm in a panic, this is 1968. This, this, I found this out. So in, on uh, July 16th, 1969, I'm driving down the beach, getting ready to deliver my first bottle of the new product, Hawaiian Tropic, which I, I decided to change the name. Rather than work for, work for this guy from Pacific, New Jersey for the rest of my life, I would have my own name, a new product. I was scared to death it wouldn't work. And I was going down to all the beach wagons down the beach, trading out bottle for bottle the, from, the, from the old Tropic Tan to the new Hawaiian Tropic. 
-hmm. And while I'm going down the beach, all of a sudden this silver bullet goes up in the sky. And I had no idea what it was. And later I found out it was Buzz Aldrin on his way to the moon. Yeah, well, that was an omen, right? Well, well I guess maybe we're on our way to the moon, too. <laughs> yeah, well, now, did you use the same bottle and everything? You just yeah. changed the label? Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. Well, see, this is back before there was the internet where you can check on names and everything. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure if that guy would have found out about you, he would have been chasing you down and wanting a percentage and everything. Of yeah, the well, well they, actually, since that time, and, and even before that time, I found out they, they, they licensed the name out to people, but it was never a success. Nobody could ever make a success out of it. And when you think about it, there's no product on the market, no suntan product on the market that has the name tan in it. And this was Tropic Tan. <clears throat> and then also was a blessing because if it says tan in the label, then what are you going to do about the sunscreen part? Because right now in today's world, sunscreens are 60 to 70 percent of the market. Right, and my research told me that you were the very first company to come out with the 15 SPF. Well, I'm the not American sure about brand. that. I, I, I don't know if that's true or not, but it could be. That's it what could it's be. when I researched you on the internet. Mm, so be. that's what it says on the internet. So it's got to be true. <laughs> well, I, well, I know at one time we had three products and then, and then four or five. I think we ended up with like six or maybe seven products on our board that we gave to the lifeguards to sell. sell. And they, the first ones were sunscreens, very rudimentary sunscreens. And then all the rest of them were tanning products like, like this. This is, a, well, this is the Royal Tanning Blend that has no sunscreen whatsoever, and it's mm -hmm. meant for the people, you know, remember in the old days we used iodine, baby oil and iodine? Right. And that's, right. That's, I mean, this isn't bad, but this is a sophisticated version of the same thing. Right. Now, you must have learned the hard way how to um, market yourself and product placement on the shelves. I had no business courses whatsoever. Uh, whatsoever. I, I was totally football, sports, and chemistry and science background. I had mm -hmm. no marketing experience whatsoever. It was all seat of the pants. Just do whatever comes to your mind and, 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 and just go with it. You know? And if you make a mistake, you make a mistake. And did you hire like the best people that you knew to market it for you? I was, you when, I, when, I, when I went to hire people, I, I was looking for people with no money and with lots of energy mm -hmm. and, and a lot of people who wanted money. <laughs> and it turned out to be a, a, a right choice and a perfect, perfect idea because, yeah. because I got the best people in the world working for me. In fact, I, I didn't realize this, but in later years we went to this conference down in Palm Beach, Florida called NACDS, which is National Association of Chain Drug. And I had this guy come up to me from Coppertown and he said, he said, you don't know this, but Coppertown fired three sets of managers because of you, talking about me three complete over a period of time because they couldn't compete with me. They couldn't figure out how, to, how, how we were doing our guerrilla marketing. We had no money. We were just running with the seat of our pants. But yet they were, they, were, they were being fired because they couldn't keep up. Because your marketing ideas were working. I know I've talked to many people that said when they first moved here in the 70s, everywhere they looked it was Hawaiian tropic everywhere. So obviously that's the way you have to do it. Yeah, but that's just here. So we had to get it all around the world. Right. So we instantly moved out. Our first uh, venture was Australia. And then from uh, Australia we went to Europe and we, we hit uh, the whole R Riviera, the French, Spanish, and Italian Riviera. And I even tried to get into the Adriatic, of course the wars were going on there, so we couldn't do that. Russia was difficult, uh, Germany is difficult, uh, South America became one of our big mainstays. Um, we had a brilliant guy, uh, uh, Pat Lewis, go down and work the South American market, anything Spanish you might say. And uh, he, uh, he we, we, could, we could virtually live off of Argentina alone, just in one country. It was that good. But uh, that's, that's just a little rundown of how, how we developed and how we Evolved, moved, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. How many countries are you in now, Hawaiian Tropic? Well, see, I'm not Hawaiian Tropic anymore. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's ask you, how many were you in when you left, when you sold the business? <laughs> <laughs> almost every country in the world. Wow, the world. that's amazing. In one way or another. I mean, I, I would go to a place I'd never been to before, and there it is, on the shelf. Uh-huh. In fact, it was kind of embarrassing because I, I went down to, uh, to Bora Bora. Uh, you know you know Bora Bora in, uh, in uh, Tahiti? Mm hmm And uh, I was snorkeling and got myself sunburned on my back and had to, had to get some burn relief uh, and aloe. Well, guess what product I bought when I went to the store? <laughs> more Hawaiian Tropic. Well, I'm thinking, you know, if I buy more Hawaiian Tropic, that means we'll sell more Hawaiian Tropic, so probably 
I get rich doing that, you know. <laughs> Go out and buy my own product. <laughs> so now it's a different time with the technology and everything, but there are lots of young entrepreneurs out there. Is there any, um, you know, advice that you would give to them on ways to start their business or anything that you learned? Well, you had some good advice about hiring people that are um, need that are young, energetic, hungry, don't have any money and want a lot of money. That's a good. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good recipe well, that's for That's the way it worked for me. Uh -huh. I mean, that's, that's kind of uh, goes without saying, but um, and I, I see a lot of people get out, of, get out in the industry and they're going the wrong direction. They're heading the wrong way. And, and they, uh, you gotta, you got to kind of decide, what, what do I want to do? What area do I want to go in? And there's not many areas that are new like, like what I had. I mean, of course, there were Suntan products on the market at the time. But there was nothing really innovative at that time. It was all very, the market was stale, uh, humdrum, just, just run of the mill. And I, I was lucky enough to see that if I came up with a coconut smelling product and fancy packaging, you know, the finest packaging you can get, uh, you can make a success of it. You and I have no money at all. And, and it, uh, it, it just grew almost like uh, like a snowball going down the hill. You remember in the old days when uh, airline pilots and stewardesses would carry Coors beer across uh, through the airports because they didn't sell Coors beer east of the Mississippi. Oh, so yeah. they would bring back six packs of Coors beer. You'd see them walking through the airport carrying Coors beer. Well, I've heard about how <coughs> pilots drink a lot. <laughs> well, they did not drink all their climate meat around. Right. Them. But, but they, they, they really did. Coors mm -hmm. beer was very smart in that sense, or maybe lucky, because I, I consider myself lucky in the same sense, because I didn't have enough money to blast the product out there and just put it everywhere, because we would have sold instantly, and we would almost maybe have been a flash in the pan had, had that happened. Had I had a lot of money, it could have been a flash in the pan and gone, and, and the next idea come along, you know. Right. Kind of the way nightclubs do today, today's right. world, you know. Uh -huh. Well, well, we uh, give you an idea of we, we sold a, an order, a big order, into a drugstore, one drugstore in Canada. It was a, a, a stand-up display. And we weren't really dealing in Canada because we didn't know how to get, a product, get the product across the border. And then there was a woman that came down here and stayed on one of the pool decks, and she loved Hawaiian Jobby. She'd bought it down here on the pool deck. She loved Hawaiian Jobby. She goes into her hometown, hometown drugstore and sees this big display. She buys the entire display at retail prices and takes the bottles out and gives them to all her friends. The druggist went crazy. He couldn't. <laughs> this lady bought the whole display. Uh -huh. He called me and said, "I've got to have. Uh, give me five of them. Give me five displays." You know. And I said, "I don't have it. I don't. I don't, I don't have the product." I said, I'll, "I'll get it to you next year. I'll put you. Uh, I'm writing your order right now. I'm putting it on the list. So you send me down a deposit, and I'll I'll make sure it gets to you. Starting next year. Mm -hmm. And it, it was kind of like that. Wow.